Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going through all the tools in Photoshop, all the features, all of the everything about Photoshop. And today we're going to talk about the color replacement tool, which is kind of hidden beneath the brush tool. Most of you probably haven't used it before. The hotkey for it is the letter B. Now the color replacement brush works pretty simply. You select a foreground color. Uh, let's make these pairs red, green, blue to go with you know RGB. I'm going to select a nice, you know, bright bluish color here, and uh, then I go and I paint over my uh, pair wherever I like. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not even using a tablet here. It's just kind of finding the edges of it for me, and uh, boom, goes ahead and converts that pair to a bluish color. Or not even bluish, just a very, very stinking blue color. Um, so we've got a blue pair, and it's not quite perfect to the edge. There we go. Um, so the way this tool works is, well, if you look closely, and zooming in isn't going to do much, but you can see a little dot right there in the center of the brush tool. If you hover that over, like I, I've got it here hovered over the, the pair color, and therefore it's going to affect the reds that it's picking up over that dot. But you can see here if I move out over the green, it's going to be, begin converting that foliage in the background um, to that blue color, which again, I have set as my foreground color. So let's talk about making this center pair here green. Well, first, we need to look here at the control bar, and we can see we have multiple modes. I'm not even going to talk about luminosity or saturation. You're probably not going to use them nearly, nearly, nearly as much as color and hue. Color does exactly what we just did. It replaces the color that's being selected uh, with the new color you've selected as your foreground color, but it paints both the hue of that color and the saturation of that color. If we just wanted to replace the color and retain the saturation of our initial image, we would just use hue. Then we're only affecting the hue. We're just converting these reds to a, a green color, and we are not affecting either the brightness or the saturation of the pair. So let's give this a go. Let's go ahead and grab a green. Oh, we can go with a nice bright green, maybe a really saturated green. And you can see we're just going to paint over this, and you can see we're not getting, I mean, we're getting a, a fairly green pair, yes, um, but it's a fairly red pair to begin with, um, and it's not nearly as electric, lime, neon, crazy green uh, as the actual color that we selected. So we get a fairly natural-looking watermelon green colored pair. Um, so how does this tool work? Well, obviously you have your modes that we just talked about, but you also have your sampling modes. Now the two that we're really going to look at are the continuous sampling, and basically continuous sampling is always looking for colors that are similar to the color you're painting over um, that are underneath that central dot, right, that we talked about that's right there in the middle of your brush. The central one is the other, uh, I believe it's called, uh, oh, once, I'm sorry, it's the once sampling mode, I don't think other, I don't use it that much either. Uh, the once sampling mode, and what it does is it picks the one initial color you begin with, like let's say this red right here, and it only paints over those reds, and when it doesn't sense those reds anymore, it just stops, like I'm clicking, I'm trying to paint down here, and it's just not. So it's saying, look, those are the reds, that's all I can paint over, that's all I'm going to do. Oh, there we go, so we're picking up a couple others. And that's it. So it's it's uh, it limits it a bit more, um, but it can be really good if you have big blocky colors. Um, you know, think like you're at a carnival and you're trying to repaint the the carousel or something. Um, and then this one over here, it just it takes your background color and only paints on colors that match your background color, which I honestly have never even used it before. Um, so the limits this basically um, controls the spread of the color, if you will, um, from the brush. I always use contiguous. I've never, I mean, I've messed around and played with discontiguous and find edges, but contiguous is the one that I use when I'm playing around with this tool and, and editing color this way. Tolerance, well, the best way to think about tolerance is if you zoom in, you can see we still have a very, very tiny bit of red on the edges there. If we boost the tolerance, some of that red will end up being converted to green. You can see just like that. So it just kind of allows the brush to look at maybe a few more pixels, be a little bit more liberal um, with exactly how it's looking at um, our pair here. So boost tolerance up, but if you boost tolerance too much, you're going to see you're just spreading the color way out into everywhere. Well, green probably isn't a good choice here because the foliage is already green, right? So if we do, if we do some blue... All right, you're going to see here when we get to the edge of the pair, we start painting blue out over the edge of that, even though you can see we still have that dot right over the edge, like within the blue of the pair.
we're still getting some of the blue on the outside of the pair. We don't like that. Uh, so tolerance, I find that it works best at like 35 for most images, um, but it's all going to depend on the image that you choose. So a rather lengthy discussion of what the color replace tool is, but it's really, really fast and easy to use if you're really into it. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of tutorials and little tips and even things that I've talked about before, the way I would typically go about doing this is like a new layer and then using the color or hue blend mode. But this is a really fast way to do it right within one layer. Uh, maybe it's not quite as non-destructive as I would like, but it's a really cool tool nonetheless, and it can be really useful to go in and make very, very fast color changes in your Photoshop document. So that is it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.